No victory for the top three in England with Chelsea, Manchester City and Manchester United failing to get an away win. Hello and welcome to Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amogwe. First, let's take a look at the major headlines. And starting from Nigeria, they are definitely on course to repeat the 1985 and 1988 Eriks at the International Table Tennis African Senior Championships in Cairo. And of course, Nigeria is favorite to win it this time around in January. And also, are English referees and managers making the happy one a sad man? <laughs> Find out on the program when Tayo will be joining me. And also, we'll be talking about Michael Schumacher. Now, it's one year today since he suffered that accident uh, while he was skiing in France. And he's actually facing a long road to recovery. Well, all these and more after this highlight where the National Hockey after this highlight from the National Hockey League, where dogs had to dig deep. In fact, the game had to go into sudden death before they could claim a 2-1 win over Vancouver Canucks and Washington Capitals thrashing Pittsburgh's Penguins by 3-0. Enjoy the highlights. Getzloff churns to the top of the slot, looking for a shooting or a passing lane. Does get it to Kessler. He scores! So that one is a little poetic justice. For the Ducks, sit cross ice with speed. Here's Truba. Truba takes the shot, got his own rebound, and he scores. He stretches it to Getzloff, protects the puck, waits for the Ducks to finish changes of their own, and Palmieri scores! High short side, and the Ducks win it 53 seconds into overtime. Attack. Says he's felt better of late, speeding better, a chance in front, people, shot scores! Eric Fair found a loose puck, puts it past Flurry by Orpik. Dupre couldn't funnel it through. And it's Johansson working his way, and a two-on-one note, Brower. Here's Johansson shooting scores! He beat Flurry with one last chance at the horn. Third shutout of the year, 14th career shutout. First win ever against Pittsburgh. Tayo Salam, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Cecilia. Great to be here once again. Um, two days um, from Christmas, uh, from New Year. Yes. I, I really can't wait. Um, it was a great. It wasn't really. Uh, there was really no holiday uh, for me because I worked on uh, yeah, I know. on Christmas Day. But then it was still fun. Yeah, the season. I felt it real good. Okay, and of course, yesterday was another big day in England. We'll talk more about that. But first, let's start from the home scene. What is happening in Nigeria? The Nigerian Table Tennis Federation, they're preparing for the African Senior Championship. Remember just last week here, they were actually seeking for phones from National Sports Commission for them to actually have a good outing. But this time around, the president of African Table Tennis Federation is actually tipping Nigeria, you know, to win this tournament. Why Nigeria is seeking for money to have a good tournament? Well, someone's already tipping Nigeria to win it because remember in 1985 and 1988, Nigeria actually had a clean sweep in that one. And with we having Harino Quadri, who happens to be the number one in Africa right now, where you can... Uh, you already know the reason why the African president of Nigerian Table Tennis Federation is tipping Nigeria to win the title. Egypt and Nigeria, he says, they are favorite. But for me, as a Nigerian, I think I'll go for Nigeria. Well, you can talk to us on Twitter and, of course, on Facebook. We'll be discussing this and so many other things we talked about in the headlines. I'm talking about Jose Mourinho being furious with what referees and managers are doing. Do you really think, uh, Chelsea, they have been wronged this time around the players collecting a fourth yellow card for diving this season so far? It started with Diego Costa in their very first game in the Premier League. Come talk to us on Twitter and, of course, on Facebook, what you think about Jose Mourinho's comment and if Nigeria really can repeat that heroic deed they did far back in the year that was uh, far back in 1985 and 1988, if they can win the African Senior Championship, which we have in Arnold Cordray for Ross. Talk to us about that. And, of course, Super Eagles, what you really want the Nigerian Football Federation to do for them when the Nations Cup is not ongoing. Of course, already we have two friendlies against Cote d'Ivoire and against Sudan that will take place in January. Tell us, Alam, okay, let's start from table tennis. Um, yeah, Cecilia, um, the 1980s, um, like you said, those were the golden years um, for Nigeria in terms of um, African table tennis. But then after that, in recent times, 
is, is, is been all about Egypt. Egypt really rose to the top uh, when it comes to tip tennis on, on the continent. But, but then it's good to see Nigeria back again now. Uh, thanks to the, uh, to the NTTF, they've been doing a great job uh, so far. And that's why uh, I'm not really surprised the president of the NTTF is tipping uh, Nigeria to come out tops um, in this um, particular um, tournament. But then um, we have Arna Kodri. I'm thinking <laughs> that, that has to be one of the main reasons um, why, why we, we've been seen and viewed uh, as favorites uh, for, for the events. And we have um, Ujuan Olapo as well. So we have a couple of youngsters that are really doing well that can make Nigeria proud uh, come the competition proper. I think maybe our performance at the Commonwealth Games, yeah, of course, also definitely, helped. Definitely, definitely. That's why I mentioned Ujuan Olapo. Ujuan Olapo in that game showed immense uh, character. Uh, for, he stayed really calm, very young lad, we have to remember that, and he stayed calm uh, to win that bronze uh, for Nigeria. So I can understand why uh, Nigeria will be going into the tournament as, um, as, um, the, likely, um, as the likely favorites Favorite. along uh, with um, Egypt as well. So the Egyptians are still very good side, we, should, we, need, we need to remember that, yes. they, still, they still have um, uh, Omar Asar, who's, who's, <laughs> yeah, who's a very good player at the time. time, he can take out any rival so we have we need to have that at the back of Come our minds on. i'm okay. talking of the players as well so they really can't underestimate any of the opponents yeah they really can do that now talking about Aruno Kodri, yeah. we know about all his heroics and all that what he did at yes. the men's uh, championship you know in, in germany and all that you know everyone is actually looking forward to him Definitely. don't you think we're kind of having something like a blessing or kagbara in athletics whenever oh. you're going for any championship there's always one figure everyone is looking forward to the focus is definitely on him. Will he not have so much pressure going into the championship? Um, uh, Cecilia, I wouldn't necessarily call it uh, a blessing or Calgary uh, scenario okay. in table tennis. We have great players in table tennis at the moment. I mentioned Ujon Alapo okay. as well as Arnold Quadri. But obviously, he's the main man. He's the, he's the biggest in Nigeria that we have uh, right in now. Africa. In <laughs> Africa, actually, he's the best in Africa as well. And um, Shagun Torola now, the, um, yeah, he's oh, retired. you know, he <laughs> stayed retired. Thank God for that. So, yeah, I understand the pressure, but that's, that's how it goes. If you're a top um, athlete anywhere in the world, uh, sometimes you have to be able to deal with this pressure. Uh, it, it comes um, with, the, with, the, with the position okay. you hold. Um, as a sportsman, if you're, if you're at the very top, if you're at the very top, you know, you need to be able to cope with all this kind of pressure. So, uh, Arnold Quadri, I believe, um, I don't think that should be any problem uh, for, him. for him at all. I believe he can actually lead Nigeria uh, very well at uh, the competition. Okay, from tennis, now move straight to the Super Eagles, of course. The home base Eagles expected to be in camp latest tomorrow. And of course, uh, Daniel Lamokachi is in charge of, would be in charge of the two friendlies they will be playing against Cote d'Ivoire and Sudan uh, in January. And of course, all the players expected to be in camp were supposed to have played Mali before, but they pulled out. Obviously, they have uh, other plans for Afghan preparations. What players expected to be in camp in Abuja? And of course, they start preparations in earnest for both games. So we're looking forward to Super Eagles getting busy while all the people are actually preparing for the Nations Cup. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame, very unfortunate one. But then that's how it goes. When you don't, when you don't do your homework, then you're about, you're about to lose out now. Instead of getting ready for AFCON, we're getting ready for God knows what. But it's all good. It's good to see the players playing games and um, actually staying yes. um, competitive, uh, which is a very good one uh, for them. But then uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the young man from Switzerland, uh, Archibong Uko, okay. apparently says he will be available uh, for these games. I've never watched him play before, so it's an opportunity Since for Nigeria. Since the league is on break, so he can... Um, exactly. It's, it's an opportunity for Nigerians to get so to see him. what it's all about and does he really have um, the quality to make the step up into the Super Eagles proper. Okay. I will just go for a short break now. We'll come back. We will be talking the English Premier League. Why is Jose Mourinho so angry after the one or draw at St. Mary's? <laughs> 